Welcome to this episode of YouTube where we want to really thank the Working for Wolves crew that was here despite all the rain and kind of all the chaos. Uh, we did spay Rika on April 30th, which required seven day a week wolf care to be able to uh, give her some comfort and make sure that she wasn't uh, interested in her sutures. So instead of having a cone of shame, we have wolf care staff 24 seven and we have lots of distractions. So this was some turkey feathers that were donated by Darren and Teresa. And uh, we also want to really acknowledge Kim Wheeler's presence here on site, for, uh, director from the Red Wolf Coalition, uh, spent uh, not only the weekend working for wolves, uh, but the next uh, week also helping on Riker duty, staying uh, on site, uh, making sure everything was okay. The boys were also worried about Rika. They were camped right outside the uh, pack holding area uh, w most of the time, uh, waiting for her to come out. Uh, that was a long wait. Uh, like I said, we wanted to make sure she was completely healed. We normally don't separate wolves uh, within the pack, but because she is the, the lone female, uh, it is easier for us to bring her in and out. She's still a juvenile by all means. She's not a mature adult. Um, so mentally, um, it was pretty easy to make that separation for her safety. What we didn't expect <clears throat> was when we brought them together, we brought them together in the pack holding area. And this is where Rika had been spending, you know, really the last day because we had so much ice and snow. We didn't want to have her uh, in there early on in the suture recovery, but certainly she was comfortable there. She um, enjoyed that space that time. Axel and Grayson don't. Uh, wolves are, are pretty uh, uh, neophobic to novel stimuli, and this pack holding area is not something they're familiar with. So you can see right away they're anxious. So what does Rika do? Takes advantage of that anx anxious behavior. You can see Grayson with a tuck tail and her grab biting his neck. It certainly wasn't the concern I had of <laughs> putting the two back together. Um, this is a concern, though. She did it to Axel, and Axel, with a little less bonding, uh, reacted with a grab uh, bite and a, and a snarl to her. So certainly we didn't want to uh, aggravate that situation anymore, so we quickly moved to opening up the chute, um, allowing them all to come and go outside of the exhibit, um, and that worked out quite well. We did it in the middle of the day, warmest part of the day, because we knew we wanted them uh, to rest. Uh, so we did it, you know, started at one o'clock uh, by three o'clock, um, easily the, uh, everybody sleeping out there in the warm sun, 60 degrees is warm for wolves, especially when we haven't had warmth. But by that time frame, you know, again, we kind of call it the witching hour where you're looking at, you know, that, uh, six o'clock time frame. Um, it is very hard for us to follow protocol, vet protocol that says, you know, keep her calm, you know, no roughhousing, no running. They're wolves. They're not dogs. And they will roughhouse. And so uh, things uh, worked out pretty well. She obviously is feeling no pain. She was glad to be back with the boys uh, chasing. Uh, she uh, has a little bit of ice yet there. The pond has not drained because we do have frost in the ground. So, uh, but uh, the vet assured me that the sutures were, the skin was intact, the sutures were good to go. They're internal sutures, they're dissolvable sutures, and uh, she should be doing great. So thanks for watching, sorry for the delay. Pretty crazy time um, this last week has been. So uh, we'll see you next time.